Hello and welcome to yet another episode of the International Journey. My name is Mohammed and today we will be covering the basics of coming to study in the US. After the couple videos that we posted, we received a lot of feedback about people asking how to get started even. So we found it necessary to do a US International Education 101. So this is US Education 101. This video will first of all cover the institutions that are here for higher education in the United States. Second, we will talk about their advantages and disadvantages to finally cover the admission process of each and every type of institution. There are a couple different options. Um, one that is very prominent in international students is uh, community colleges. The second one is a regular university where you can obtain a bachelor's, master's, doctorate degree. And there are also technical colleges where you can just go and obtain like a technical degree. For example, if you into mechanics or something like that, you can obtain a degree from those technical colleges. Uh, to make this conversation a little bit more interesting, I'll try to cover things basically in a standpoint of uh, advantages and disadvantages. So starting from community colleges, like I said at first, community colleges offer an associate degree and basically what an associate degree means in the whole scheme of higher education is the two first years of a regular bachelor's degree. So for example, myself, I started in a community college where I obtained my associates of science in electrical engineering, basically the two first years of my regular bachelor's degree of electrical engineering. Some of the advantages of a community college is it's most of the time it's it's a smaller school compared to a bigger university so an international student an international student let's say can be more comfortable navigating the premises getting more comfortable using the language accommodating to american culture as well because uh huge crowds can be very nerve-wracking if you're not uh familiar with the environment also another advantage of uh, community colleges is they are very cheap compared to a regular university let's say half of the tuition of a regular university per se another advantage of community colleges is one can um, take english as second language classes to develop their english and get immersed with the culture in an admission standpoint community colleges do not ask too many documents compared to universities for example most community colleges won't ask you to provide a TOEFL which is like an english test on IELTS, they won't also ask you for like SAT scores, which are like standards for basic university undergrad. Let's say another super good uh, thing, and this is personal to me, is you tend to have an easier contact with professors because they are most of the time not running researches, not running research in these community colleges. So this gives you a lot more time for explanation. Let's say you are taking a subject that is a little bit tough, and you having a hard time comprehending what the professor is explaining. You can go to their office hours, talk to them more smoothly because they do not like a lot of students who want to see them at the same time. The advantage of community colleges is the flexibility for taking classes. Classes are offered in various time frames, morning, afternoon, sometimes even in the weekend. So this gives either international students or even domestic students the opportunity to take classes at different period of time where they feel more comfortable doing so. Another advantage of community colleges is after your graduation you can apply for a one-year OPT. OPT means optional practical training. That means you can start looking for employment during that one year time frame and hopefully practice what you've learned during your two first years of community college. Now let's talk about the disadvantages of community college because it's not all rosy. One of the main disadvantages of community college is they do not really offer scholarships to international students because the tuition is most of the time super low. As a result, no scholarships or very few scholarships are offered to international students. Another disadvantage of community colleges is currently there are more than 1,700 uh, community colleges in the whole United States, but only 300 of them have dorms. So that means if you're coming to study in a community college, you better start looking for an accommodation that way you know where you're gonna live the third 
disadvantage of community colleges it's not a typical university as a result it's not a typical university campus life where there's a lot of organization a lot of associations that you can get in touch with get active and all those sort of things that could be like a hurdle for some people who really like to get involved on campus and live fully the university life so now let's transition straight up to universities of like full or big institutions where you can obtain a bachelor's degree master's or doctorate let's get it So now let's talk about universities. Like I said in the beginning, universities are places where you can get your bachelor's, master's or doctorate degrees. And uh, they have many, many advantages. Some of the advantages of universities are most of them or a big, a good number of them are accredited education. So you are sure that what you are paying your money for, it's worth it. You will get an accredited degree that will be recognized pretty much everywhere. Another advantage of going to university is they have lots of scholarships for international students and that can help reduce the cost of international education one other advantage for university is employment myself i am so grateful that i have found a university that offered a lot of employment opportunities through throughout career fairs or different other sorts of networking events where you can meet people who are hiring in your department Another cool thing about university, or I'll call it an advantage since we're talking about advantages, it's the campus life. One can get involved in so many different things and learn so many different skills about it. Um, for example, the university I'm going to offers so many different uh, kinds of campus life activities, frats, uh, student governments. Um, tribunals, uh, competitions throughout different universities as well. So these are things that do not really uh, relate to your typical education, I would say, meaning going to school, getting your degree. But these are skills that you build to be able to navigate the real life after your student life, basically. Some of the, the disadvantages of universities, though, are like class sizes can be huge. If you are an international student coming from a different background where culture is probably different as well it can be a little bit intimidating because universities are like super fast paced class sizes are huge like I said and some of them are not even taught by regular professors they're taught by teaching assistants these are students who have taken the classes previously some of them have graduate degrees some others do not really have graduate degrees but are they because have already taken the classes and have gained a significant amount of knowledge they can be of a lot of help, but nothing is comparable to the teaching of somebody who already know what they're talking about, meaning they have had done research regarding this particular subject. Um, another disadvantage of, of universities is like we said they offered a lot of scholarship, but nevertheless, these scholarships are super competitive because there are tons of other students who want to get the same scholarship as you. So getting these scholarships can be a challenge it shouldn't stop you from going or applying for them but it's just a good thing to keep in mind that they are competitive and you have to work hard to get them another disadvantage of going to university is it's a little bit harder to find campus job as you know international students are typically only allowed to work on campus and um, since there are lots of students going in the same campuses and lots of them also want to have these jobs, it can be a little bit more competitive to find this campus job. Now let's talk about the admission process in the higher education institutions of the United States. Um, now let's, let's get started with community colleges. So for community college, the admission documents that they require for interna from international students are uh, high school transcripts eventually they want to know that you went to high school two they ask for a bank statement proving that you'll be able to finance your education in the United States three which is not compulsory if you have a uh, TOEFL or IELTS scores to prove that your level of English is already up there and you don't need to take EAP classes you can submit those documents those are the three main documents that are required by community colleges now let's talk about the universities Admission for universities 
can be a lot more complicated compared to community colleges. Some of the documents that they require are your high school transcripts, SAT scores, um, uh, TOEFL or IELTS, regardless of uh, either you came from an English speaking country or non English speaking countries. This might vary by university, so you have to check with the specific university that you're trying to go to to make sure that their admission process do not require a TOEFL or IELTS if you are coming from an English speaking country. There's also an admission essay that pretty much every student has to write so that they can determine if you will be a good fit for the university. Last but not least, they will also ask for a recommendation letter coming from either your professors or people who you interact with in your daily basis while you are in high school. The third admission process that we would like to talk that we wanted to talk about but don't see a huge crowd behind it is the admission process for technical colleges. So if you have any questions regarding this specific one, please leave a comment down below or send us an email. We will be more than happy to talk to you about the admission process for admission for technical colleges. Thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, if you have any questions regarding the admission process, for example, if you're a doctorate or master's student, we didn't really go in depth into that. But if you have any questions, please feel free to hit us up on Facebook. We will put down the link below. And uh, thank you. Hope to hear more from your international journey. Thank you.